Hi, this is Devasis from Circuit Digest once again back with another video and in front of me the circuit you are seeing is the PID based encoder motor control circuit. So as you can see we, we have the circuit right here. This is our Arduino which is running the PID algorithm. This is the H bridge which is driving the motor and this is the this is our little 3.3 volt or 3 volt mod, 3 voltish motor that we are using and this is the encoder right here. The wheel you are seeing right here is the encoder. Um, and this module as this is a 3.3 volt module I am using this regulator to bring down the voltage to 3.3 volt so all the details for this project is available on our vlog so if you want to know more about the topic do check out the link given in the description that will redirect you to our vlog where you can find all the details in this video we will learn what happens when you apply the PID control algorithm in this type of closed loop system like this and what happens if you don't so let uh, let us see what happens so for for the test uh let me just bring down my camera now you can see it pretty better so i have made a little test code where i've uh, turned off the motor when a certain threshold count is reached and i've turned on the motor again when again it sets to zero so just let me show you that as you can see the motor will spin if i just so as you can see the motor is spinning it pretty much stopped at the point where it started but you will see the difference when when i will show you the serial monitor window so let me uh, set it back again where in the beginning position did you see the difference now let me show you the serial monitor window so this is the serial monitor window and you can see the code uh, beside that and the code is very simple i have uh, when i press one the motor start uh, start rotating clockwise and when i press two the motor start rotating counterclockwise and it stops when uh, it pretty much reached a certain count which is 2098 in my case as this is a 1 is to 2098 count motor so let me just press one and see what happens as you can see i have told the motor to stop at uh, 2098 but it didn't stop there it counted all the way to 2155 so let's see what happens when i set it back to zero so as you can see all again it uh, did not stop at zero uh, zero degrees it stopped at uh, minus 65 degrees which means it rotated back again a little bit so this is the this happens due to the inertia of the motor the motor could not uh, get to that certain point so in this code try to rotate the uh, shaft of the motor 360 degrees without uh, any glitches so as you can see right now the uh, as you have seen just now that i have tried to rotate the motor clockwise 360 degrees and anti-clockwise uh, 360 degree back to zero but that did not certainly happen the motor rotated way beyond the uh, way beyond 360 degrees so this is uh, some of the problems which are associated uh, when you try to uh, power or try to drive a motor with this kind of on off control so let's see our pid code and what uh, happens when we apply the, this pid code so here here is the code uh, running so let me just put up uh, 2098 again As you can see, the motor exactly stopped at 2098 count. As you can see it right in here, as you can see right in here, this is the PWM value and this is the count value I am printing out. So the motor stopped exactly at 2098 count. And if I press back zero again, 
you just saw the PID controller just controlled, set it back to zero as it went. Uh, for inertia, it just went minus one, but the controller set it, uh, sets uh, that back to zero. So as you have seen the demo, let's understand the code now. But before that, uh, let's uh, see the movement of the motor once again. So here is my motor and I've just pressed 209 it again. As you can see, uh, you have just noticed the flickering that happened just before it stopped. That happened because the PID controller took action and it sets it at the point which you know, where we just wanted. And let me set it back to zero again. As you can also see that the jittering action happened again. So yeah, this is how the controller works and let's move on to the code and let's see how the code works. So I have Arduino IDE open right here and as you can see I have included the PID controller.h library. Most of the uh, work is done by the library so it must be included otherwise the code will not work absolutely. So I have also defined defined the encoder pins uh, for the in motor, uh, which is pin two and pin three. If you are uh, using something else, please remember that these two pins have to be uh, interrupt enabled or interrupt capable pins. Otherwise, the code will not work because. Mm, the pulses coming from the encoder motor are really fast without interrupt you cannot catch them so next we defined the pins for the H bridge or, or the H bridge that's driving the motor uh, this pins uh, can enable or disable the H bridge depending on how we configure them so next we define the constant value for the proportional integral and, and derivative controller which is right here so i have used the trial and error method to set this code if you are doing this what you can do is you can set all the parameters to zero and then you can start from ground up to do the to all your things uh, since I, this is perfect for me i'm not changing this so next we have this uh, long volatile int variable which stores our encoder count uh, this has to be a volatile int otherwise it may or may not work and uh, give you some issues uh, so next we have the unsigned in, uh, integer variable and incoming wide variable so this variable receives the serial data and uh, uh, serial data character by character and once the whole character is received uh, it is saved in the integer value variable so next we have this motor pwm value variable once we get the value we pass it through a compute uh, uh, statement that computes the integral values and then we store this value here so I have set it to maximum for now otherwise the motor will run from the start as you will later see in the code so uh, after that we defined an instance for the PID controller class which is this right here and with this we will uh, go for the rest of the code next we enable the serial for debugging we set the encoder a and encoder b pins as input and we set the motor clockwise and motor counter clockwise pins as output next we attached an interrupt to the encoder a pin otherwise uh, if you don't do this you will never be able to read the encoder because it's uh, the pulses are coming are really fast Next, we initialize the PID controller with its begin method. Next, we tune the PID controller with the assigned value. This is where we have to put the assigned values. Otherwise, 
uh, if you change this you uh, if you are doing this and if you change the values or tweak around with it you can understand what uh, will happen if you change these values nothing much will happen if you change the derivative controller but you can change the integral controller and uh, you know, value for the integral controller and see for yourself so next we set a limit for the uh, limit for the PID controller so the value will not go from minus 255 to plus 255 values this is uh, required to uh, for a stable control you will see later in the code so next we have our loop in the loop we first read the serial and first we parse the integer from the uh, serial then we parse the incoming byte with another um, serial read so if the incoming next we check if the incoming byte is exactly equals to equals to a new line character if that happens we continue the loop uh, this continue statements mean if uh, the, the uh, control will go from here to here then the loop will start again this is just to skip this new line character so now as you can see we have the set point method so uh, we are receiving an integer value from the serial and we are passing it through the set point method this is this set point method is the method uh, which the controller will try to reach before it stops so this is a very important um, step and uh, this is uh, this is not mandatory that it needs to be serial you can use any other means to set this set point you can use a potentiometer you can use other sensors to set this set point and the code will just work next we print the integer value just for debugging next we have this uh, motor pwm value uh, this is a variable or this is what uh, will uh, which controls the output PWM actually so we pass the controller count to the compute method so what is uh, what this does is uh, we have now as you can see we have the count variable right when the motor is rotating uh, interrupt is generating that interrupt is calling this encoder function the encoder function is uh, checking if the motor is rotating clockwise or counterclockwise if the motor is rotating uh, uh, clockwise then we increment the counter else we decrement the counter so if the motor is rotating a count is increasing and this count is computed with the compute method this compute method returns a pwm value this pwm value we print in the serial monitor window we check it if it's uh, greater than zero if it's greater than zero then we uh, just call the function with motor uh, counterclockwise or motor clockwise um, function and we uh, also print the encoder count just so for debugging so this is uh, basically what the code is happening so let me tell you what is happening in the in these functions so we check uh, in the motor clockwise function uh, we check if the value is greater than 100 or not so this 100 uh, is when you set all your set points and all your kp ki and kd value uh, if you are doing nothing the controller will uh, give you some a margin of values so you have to just uh, remove it somehow so i have used uh, this if method if the value is zero i have received a value of 100 so i have to remove uh, that once we once i do this i can put this power value and uh, just put it in a analog write function just like that and for the safety i uh, set the motor co counter clockwise pin and uh, as low and if the power value is uh, not greater than 100 i set both to low 
similar thing is happening for the motor counter clockwise part we check if the power value is greater than 100 if so we do an analog write on the motor counter clockwise pin and we just uh, give it the power value which is the which is which sets the pwm value and the else is just the same so this is basically how the code works i hope and you loved the project and learned something new if you have any questions regarding this project you can just comment it down below so catch you next time